This is the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 21, and I'll read verse 22 in both the KJV and NLT versions. And it reads, What fruit had ye then in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death, NLT. And what was the result? You are now ashamed of the things you used to do, things that end in eternal doom, which doom goes back to judgment. All right. And the judgments that the Lord has set for these last and troubling days are nothing to play with. So it'd be the best thing for you is to turn back. Hence. The ministry of reconciliation, hence a time of grace to repent and turn back unto the heavenly father and his only begotten son to call upon them in their true and proper names uttered and written and known in the ancient paleo Hebrew. And I will give those things unto you. If you're a newcomer, be patient for the gift that you're about to receive ooh, is world changing. And for those of you that has already been around a Shalom, peace and blessings unto the hopeful elect that house of David to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Giving double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. That taught me and brothers like me and you believers this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with the names of our power, the Heavenly Father, the Most High, the Father of Spirits, okay, and His only begotten Son, who has become for us wisdom and through the law as being a schoolmaster to lead us even unto himself. And through him, we shall obtain eternal life. Now, this is the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 22. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life, NLT. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. And most people are like, well, I don't want to turn because I don't want to be a slave. I don't want to be. I don't be. But yet in this world, you're a slave to everything, subject to payments and all this other crap. And you're subject to die one day. But you sinning is, is, is speeding up that process. But turning back unto the Lord, yeah, you may be a servant or a slave or a prisoner of hope, but yet you are free and yet you are promised eternal life. And with that, giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashim meaning in the name, Ba in Ha the Shum name. Yahweh Shai, the name of the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, His true and proper name, which the world has ignorantly called Jesus Christ, and whom we do worship. All right? Given this marvelous and beautiful truth, we were given this by our teachers, our elders, the apostles, men risen up, men given the Holy Spirit to speak these things. But the prophecies came not in old time by the will of men or man, but by holy men that were moved by the Holy Spirit. Same here and now, because as it is written, they that call upon my name shall be saved. Who's the day and what name must we call upon to be saved? Here, you will receive that, that answer. Now, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yah, meaning he, Hawa, meaning exists or is or is to be. He is, he exists, he, the existing one. For he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. Okay, you must seek his presence, seek what is pleasing unto him. Know his marvelous acts. Know what is to come. Know what will happen, what he has pronounced, what he has planned. And to know that he is, you're you going to know that he is the one to get you in and out of every situation. He is the one to guide you. He is the one to free you. He is the one to let you know that everything is all right. He is. 
and without faith, it is impossible to please him. Now, in the name of his only begotten son, because he first loved us and he loved us so much, the world, the world of Israel. You go into the word world in that particular scripture in John 3, 16, you have to go into the Greek. And in that word, world, the Greek word is cosmos, which means a, a collection of stars all right, or a body of stars, a government or organization, a, an arrangement. That is the nation of Israel, because you go into you know, outer space, you have a cosmos or a galaxy. Now, the galaxy is separated in itself as its own galaxy, but it is yet a part of the greater universe. Just as us, the Israelites, we are a part of this earth, this world, but we are our own nation compared to the other nations. And the Lord said, I came to save that world. You see, because during the time that Yahweh Shai came on the scene, you had the Roman world, but he didn't come to save them, the Edomites. He came to save Israel within that world, the world of itself, a world without end, even Israel. Now, in the name of his only begotten son, his true and proper name, which is Yahweh Shai, he came to save. He came to deliver that world, beginning with the hopeful elect, that house of David. His name, Yahweh Shai, Yah meaning he, Yahweh Shai, meaning deliverer and savior. And that is exactly what he will come and do for the second time in physical form, yet as an angelic force, for he has already saved us from ourselves, from sin and from death by shedding his precious blood over 2,000 years ago and have defeated death, the last enemy, for Yahweh Shai is our champion. All right, he is the captain and finisher of our faith. All right, that through him we may obtain eternal life and that we may be an image of the heavenly father's own eternity and return unto our former estate, even as the son of Yahweh has returned unto his former estate at the right hand of power. Okay. So Lord's willing, this is an edifying lesson. The Lord's will not call this lesson. Continue upon the path unto righteousness. Continue upon the path unto righteousness, going into resurrection, going into eternal life, going into living again. And we're going to get into the commentary as we always do. And uh, Lord's willingness is edifying. Praise ye Yahweh, Bashim al for all that he have done and all that he will yet do. For it has already been written. Oh, I have not seen nor ear heard what the Lord have in store for them that love him. This is Isaiah 55 and 3. Incline your ear and come unto me here, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Now, David was given these sure mercies because what he committed, the three great sins, he could have been put and should have been put to death for those. But the Lord has favor upon whom he will and has mercy unto whom he will. But understand this. That even David in all his greatness and might that the Lord pronounced upon him in his life, he still had a weakness, as we all do. The flesh and to be one with the Heavenly Father, we must be released from this flesh and be put into a glorious body, a heavenly body, and have the laws placed within our inward parts so that we may do all the things that are well pleasing unto our God. But that's why the Lord gave the sure mercies as he did unto David, because where we find ourselves now, even without God in the world and without Yahweh Shai, knowing their true and proper names, but knowing of them, right? We, we, we would have been just as guilty as David, according to our own law. You must be put to death. You must die. You are that man. Ah. So you have to look in the mirror, but you, but hey, but there's a way out. We must be conformed unto the image of the Heavenly Father's Son, even Yahweh Shai, who had became wisdom for us. And through him being as a lamb to the slaughter, he had freed us and made us servants unto the Lord. Slaves, as it would be. But it goes to show you, slaves in the ancient world, especially according to our law, a slave would come up. Man. A servant would come up. And there were certain uh, things you had to do according to your servant or your slave. Couldn't just treat him any which way. When you think a slave, you're thinking about what Esau did to us. Fuck that guy and death and destruction to him. He's a self-proclaimed white man and his people. And we're going to give those assholes double and they're going to be destroyed. 
But in this lesson, we're going into eternal life. And that is not granted unto everybody. It is only granted unto Israel. Beginning with the hopeful elect that house of David that have been graced and given the sure mercies of David. This is the book, uh, book of Isaiah 55, and I'll go to four. And it says, Behold, I have given him. Now, you would think it's talking about David, but really it's talking about Yahweh Shai. Because David was a leader and a commander over our people during his life. But how much more Yahweh Shai? He is a leader and a commander over our people, beginning with those that believe the, the household of faith, even the house of David. Because the Lord is going to lead us into everlasting to everlasting. He's going to lead us into a glorious and eternal kingdom. We're going to have life eternal through him. For this is life eternal, to know the one true power and whom and he whom he have sent, even Yahweh Shai. All right, we know the one true power, Yahweh, and the one whom he have sent is his only son, Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son, because we're sons of the Lord as well. But his only begotten son is Yahweh Shai. I, whom the world is going to call Jesus Christ. But let's go. Keep up with me. And it says, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. Because at this time, we're not a nation. And even when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, the majority of the nation was gone. The northern kingdom had already sailed away. There was pockets of the north within our lands still. The, uh, certain of the southern kingdom were Babylonianized, or they stayed in those Babylonian lands. They didn't return to rebuild the temple during the time of Ezra, Zerubbabel, and uh, uh, Jeshua, the high priest, Nehemiah, and, and those other uh, prophets and contemporaries of that time. And they stayed in those medial Persian lands, the Babylonian lands. And then beyond that, many Jakes were Hellenized, and they were in Greek city-states and throughout the Roman world when uh, Yahweh Shai came on the scene. So we weren't a people, we weren't a nation. Now we had the pocket keeping uh, the customs from the Maccabee era, the Southern Kingdom, but they were even corrupted to an extent and had to be freed. Hence, Yahweh Shai came on the scene to say that which was lost. All right. It says, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. And the nations, ooh, because you got to remember we're a company of nations. Our, our nation is one nation, but we're a company of nations. Each tribe can be its own nation and is its own nation, but we're one people. It says, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy power. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he have glorified thee. The Lord glorified his son and through us following his son and knowing what he came to do and preach and teach, we shall be glorified. All right. Seek ye, verse six, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And the only way you can call upon the Lord is if you know his name and the name of his son. And how do you know that he is near when he sends out his men that are speaking on his behalf and prophesying in his name and praising him for all that he have done? All right. So without further ado, let's jump out of there. Let's go to um, let's go to the book of John. All right, the words of eternal life. Let's get that. It's like you. Because we know in the spirit, if, if if you can receive it, Peter is David, right? Now, we read about the sure mercies of David, right? Right? And Peter was given that mercy. Just as all of us are given that mercy. All right? Again, even though we were somewhat lost and, and really just, you know, at war with our own selves. Because hey, Peter, he he was beautiful because he said, Lord, I'm, you know, I'm a sinful man. I'm, you know, I need help. But yet he's the head of the church. Yet the Lord dealt with him. Yet he ate with the Lord, seen the Lord, was an eyewitness of the Lord as the others were. The other uh, 12, save for Judas, who was the son of perdition that was going to fall away. But he even seen what Yahweh Shai was capable of and what he came to do. But he wanted to, you know, forward that, fast forward it or force the Lord's hand and the Lord would not have it. Now, this is John 6 and 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life. That's us going into these scriptures, eating the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Do we eat on the Lord and stuff? You, 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 got, you can't be simple. 
You got to be in the spirit. Because your spirit needs to somewhat eat their spiritual food and their physical food. And we're giving ourselves the spiritual food through the word of Yahweh Shai. This word, this Bible, this gospel, this good news, John 6 and 54. Then that's how we start on that path with the Lord. We follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. It says, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now we're at that time. Now let's go here to John 6 and 68. But let's start at verse 65. And he said, this is the Lord Yahweh Shai, red letter. Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father, the heavenly father, Yahweh. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him because the saying of that parable he gave of them eating him and drinking him. But they weren't spiritual. Go into the word and see what is being done in your days. Is it not written in your law? That's what we're doing in the spirit. That's how we're walking upon that path. You know, uh, just like the high gates during the 300. Uh, uh, Leonidas specifically got uh, top uh, 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 battle hardened, best of the best soldiers to go with him. Only 300. You know, because he had the whole, you know, the Greek, uh, the Spartan army or whatever. But he took the best of the best. He's like, I don't need too many. I just I just need this little small little force. And, and, and when we go up against our enemy, they have all these numbers where we're going to battle them at. Numbers count for nothing. So it goes to show you, you have to be spiritual to, to enter into that path. A tough road for tough men. But at the end, there's great glory and honor and eternal life. Woo! From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Yahweh Shai unto the twelve, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Question. Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Mashiach. Hamashiach, those it says Christ right there. The true title of our Lord and Savior is Mashiach, which is anointed. Ha meaning the anointed. So Hamashiach, the anointed. Mashiach is anointed, which you where you get the word Messiah from. We believe that you are the Messiah. It, it says, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Messiah or Mashiach, Hamashiach, the son of the living power. Woo! You see? Yahweh Shai answered them, have not I chosen you, twelve, and one of you is a devil. <laughs> and the Lord is talking about Judas Iscariot. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Now it goes to show you that all that are in this truth, they're not right. And certain brothers are on that path, as we read in the book of uh, Edris, Second Edris. All right, there's a narrow path, fire on one side and water on the other side. Brothers is steadily upon that path. We're not looking back. We're not looking to the side. We're looking forward. We can't get in front of the guy in front of us. We got to just keep on moving. We can't stop because there's people behind us coming. So you just got to keep moving forward. And you have to just deal with whatever you got to deal with on that path. But. We're, at least we're on the right, we're going the right direction. We're following Yahweh Shai. We're following the men that follow Yahweh Shai, our teachers, our apostles, our elders, okay? Brothers, our comrades, fellow soldiers, yoke fellows, all right? And we're going to get there. You just hold on. We're going to get there. You just hold on. We're going to get there, all right? Great matter or small. <laughs> Bear with me. Damn. That's <laughs> back. All right. Let's go to the Apocrypha. It's Wisdom Song. Oh, it's Sirach 4. Or is it Sirach 5? Sirach 5. Yep, Sirach 5. This is uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus 5 and 15. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or small. To most people, uh, back in the ancient world, our people knew of reincarnation, the resurrection. They knew of these things and believed in them. They may not have understood it perfectly, 
but they at least understood that it was possible and it was there and it was real. But in this world, oh, that's a small man. Like, oh, you're crazy, you're a conspiracy theorist. But a, but a gray matter is some stupid ass money in this world. But yet reincarnation and resurrection is a great matter to most people it's small. But hey, don't be ignorant in it, though. Do you understand it? If you don't understand it, get into it. And if you do understand it, hey, bring it out. And that's what I'm going to do in this lesson. I was willing to edify. We're going to get into the commentary and it's going to tell you everything you need to know. It says, be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small. See that? Now let's go to the point and uh, going to close out this lesson. I ain't going to make it too long. Let's see here what else we got. Ooh, man. Ecclesiastes 6 and 18. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. So shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. And wisdom is Yahweh Shai. He's going to be with you until you're old. Okay? Because you're gathering instruction from your youth. Were you not born again? So now you have to start everything over and relearn. And you have to put your hand to the plow and no looking back. Come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth and wait for her good fruits. Woo! But thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her wisdom, but thou shalt eat her fruit, her fruits right soon. Ooh, that's it. So you're going to eat of these fruits. It ain't going to take no long time because your spirit is finally eating. Imagine being starved and shit and you're throwing like a cracker or some bread or some water. You go gargle it up, eat, eat it real fast. Yeah, oh, thank you. So how much more your spirit, when you hear these words, when you go into these things, when you hear the name of Yahweh Shemeshai, is it not in the same sense, just as that? You're going to eat her fruits right soon. It ain't going to take a very long time. I was going to 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to jump into this commentary. But let me see, uh, go to the scripture. As we have bore the earthy, so shall we bear the heavenly. Come on. Where it is. I was around here someplace. Yep, there it is. First Corinthians fifteen and forty nine. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. See that? NLT. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. We're going to be changed. Now let's get into this commentary. And we're going to close on out. All right. We're going to go to Matthew Henry. All right, his his commentary. We're gonna go into the midst of it. All right. Ooh. I'll start at verse thirty-three. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding, and if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. That's it. That's it. Knowledge of the holy is understanding. Must know who the Lord is to understand his great gifts and what is possible. For what is impossible with men is possible with Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All right. To so stand in the multitude of the elders, that's where we learn these things from, and cleave unto him that is wise. Our apostles are always jumping into these topics. But who said it first? Yahweh Shai. So we have to be with him. Wisdom is Yahweh Shai. So us supping with the Lord and understanding these things and becoming wise and, and taking the instruction and hearing, we're, we're, we're obeying and taking heed unto Yahweh Shemah Shai. Our Heavenly Father first and foremost, and then Yahweh Shai, who is the middleman between us and our power. Now let's go into this commentary and get into the midst of it. All right, that's all the way at the bottom. We're going to start about... Uh, uh, right here. Start right. Here. It says, 
bullet point one, well, I'll read this. He urges or argues, this is a Paul, from the absurdity of his own conduct and that the other Christians, which are the Israelites who believed in the Messiah upon this supo, uh, supo, supposition, all right? It says it would be a foolish thing for them to run so many hazards. Everyone knows that it was dangerous being a Christian, which is a believer of the Messiah and Israelite, and much more a preacher and an apostle. At that time, says the apostle, note that but we're on that road. Just I mentioned the 300, that was the spirit. The best of the best of the warriors went with King Leonidas to, to face the Persians. All right, that had a million man army, that their marching shook the earth, that their arrows blotted out the sun. Oh, then we were fighting the shade. How about that? Because we had the, the shadow and the protection of the Almighty. See? It says, says the apostle, note, Christianity, which is uh, the true worship with the belief of the Messiah, which is in Israel, okay? Because the law is our schoolmaster to lead us to Hamashiach, and you heathens, they never kept the law and will never do such until your ass is forced to keep the law under our kingdom and in our kingship, all right? But for now, you will be uh, destroyed. Whatever the Lord has planned for you. This is for the elect. This is for the household of faith. This is for our people. This is for you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American, and Seminole Indians, and those of our people scattered among the nations. I say greetings unto you that hears this word and it resonates with your spirit. And this is something that has been tapping at your heartstrings. Resurrection, eternal life. What does that really mean? What is that even about? This is it. It says, note, Christianity uh, were a foolish profession if it proposed no hopes beyond this life, at least in such hazardous times as attended the first profession of it. It required men to risk all the blessings and comforts of this life and to face and endure all the evils of it woo, without any future prospects and in and is this a character of his religion fit for a Christian to endure? Ooh. And must he not fix this character on it if he give up his future hopes and deny the resurrection of the dead? This argument the apostle brings home to himself. By your rejoicing in Yahweh Mashiach, by all the comforts of Christianity, which is the true belief of the Messiah, and it can only, and you can only believe in the Messiah if you're an Israelite. I mean, you can know about the Messiah if you're a heathen. He's going to be your king and ruler, or your overseer, the authority amongst the realms of men. But he is our king, our friend, our brother, our kinsman, according to the flesh. He's everything to us. And that's why we have a rejoicing in him. Because he's going to come free us from all of this. Even these bodies, which you heathens will never be freed of. But you will have a law and you will have a greater world and a glorious kingdom so that you may be subject unto it and be subjects within it. All right. It says by all the comforts of the true followers of the Messiah and all the peculiar succors and supports of our holy faith that I die daily. All right. Verse 31. He was in continual danger of death and carried his life, as we say, in his hand. And why should he thus expose himself if he had no hopes after life to live in daily view and expectation of death and yet have no prospect beyond it must be very heartless and uncomfortable. In his case, upon this account, a very melancholy one, he had need be very well assured of the resurrection of the dead or he was guilty of extreme weakness and hazarding all that was dear to him in this world and his life into the bargain. He had encountered very great difficulties and fierce enemies. He had fought with beasts at Ephesus. <laughs> yeah, he's, turned, he's thrown to the gladiatorial arena, the, 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 the games, right? And that's the spirit, because brothers went through goddamn uh, the gang era, crack era, all type of shit in this life. But now, being in this truth, going back into those worlds and seeing that the world is waxing worse and worse, we're not afraid of these things because we already lived through them through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemashah. And now having this truth, 
We're like, Paul, there's a reason we're hazarding in our lives because this is not life at all. But we are going to receive life when Yahweh Shah returns. Hence, we have died to this world. We are crucified with them. We're on the path unto righteousness. And righteousness is immortal. It says, and was in danger of being pulled to pieces by an arranged multitude, enraged or enraged, so like a multitude, stirred up by Demetrius and the other craftsmen, Acts uh, 19, 24. Though some understand this literally of Paul's being exposed to fight with wild beasts in the amphitheater at the Roman show in that city at, uh, and nice Niso Forest tells us a formal story of this uh, uh, purport or support. They didn't mean to say support as the spirit. And also, you know, uh, uh, Paul had to fight beasts like niggas, man, because <laughs> niggas is acting like beasts. All right. Because, you know, a nigga is an animal, man. It's hard to deal with these clowns. But hey, Jake even came out of that world to this world. It goes to show you the power of it. I will not uh, uh, know um, the words of the men, but the power. Uh, I forget how it goes. Um, let me get that. But the, but the power. All right. The, the power. Yeah, because the dudes can say all the hell they want to say. But hey, it ain't about the words. It's about the power that's behind it. What we speak and what we say, there's power behind it because uh, Yahweh Shemashah is within it. All right. All right. Let me put but the power. Bear with me, brothers. Woo! First Corinthians four nineteen. But I will come to you shortly if the Lord will. And will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. See, because niggas can be puffed up, but you ain't got no power behind you. We do with this word. All right. Let's keep reading it on. It says, and of the miraculous compliance of the lions to him when they came near him. But so remarkable a trial and circumstance of his life, methinks, would not have been passed over by Luke, and much less by himself. When he gives us so large a particular, a detail of his sufferings, second uh, Corinthians 11 and 24, when he had mentioned that he was five times scourged of the Jews, thrice beaten with rods, one stone, thrice shipwrecked, which is three times. It is strange that he should not have said that he was one exposed to fight with the beast. I take it, therefore, that this fighting with beasts is a figurative expression that the beasts intended were men of fierce and <laughs> ferine disposition. Hey, but as a spirit, I, I suppose both. Really, I believe both, you know, because he was already a bounty hunter before he was converted. So he was a rough man. He's tough, man. Wasn't no punk. People was no no pushovers, no punks back then, man. So hey, he, he could have been thrown in an amphitheater and survived and, and uh, against niggas, you know. <laughs> so, hey, it is what it is. Okay. It says uh, certain brothers have been in like the, the, the prison system or the jail or whatever and survived that underground fucking fight club type shit that could have been destroyed in there. But somehow you made it through. And if you were to be thrown back into that situation, now you had the spirit of your how about my shine angels around about you. And as ain't there's going to be nothing in your sight. But even just living through it is a is a is an example and a testimony of the power of Yahweh Yahweh Shai. There's many stories that our apostles have of their deliverances and their uh, uh, victories in Yahweh Yahweh Shai over their foes that came against the truth. It says, and that this refers to a passage above cited, says he, was Paul so senseless 
Had he given the Corinthians any ground to entertain such a thought of him? If he had not been well assured that death would have been to his advantage, would he in this stupid manner have thrown away his life? Could anything but sure hopes of a better life after death, which is a new life, when we're born again, when we're risen, we're resurrected for Yahushua is the resurrection. We're going to be raised in that day, at that day. And even Paul said, the Lord have a crown for me. All right. Says the what you want uh, what a, a dead person is gonna have a crown. You are gonna die, go to a uh, spiritual place, and then get a crown there. That don't make no sense. No, you are gonna reign on earth. The Lord is King in the heavens, and Yahweh is right there on His right hand. And even the, the twenty-four elders, they throw their crowns at the ground because the Lord Yahweh Shai is so great. So the Lord's gonna make us kings and priests on the earth, and we're gonna reign with Yahweh Shai. You gotta make this thing make sense, and that is the sense of it. Praise ye, Yahweh, Shai. Though in that body that the Lord is going to give us, we're going to be able to enter into the spirit realm at will. But it just goes to show you, man, the, the emphasis of it. It says, would he in this stupid manner have thrown away his life? Could anything but the sure hopes of a better life after death have extinguished the love of, of life in him to this degree? Note, it is very lawful and fit for a true believer of the Messiah to propose advantage to himself by his fidelity, his faith to Yahweh, by Shemashai, thus did Paul, thus did our blessed Lord himself, Hebrews 12, 2. And thus we are bidden to do after this example or after his example and have our fruit to holiness and that our end may be everlasting life. This is the very end of our faith, even the salvation of our souls. It says, even the salvation of our souls, 1 Peter 1 and 9, not only what it will issue in, but what we should aim at. That's it. That's it. It says it would be a much wiser thing to take the comforts of this life. Let us eat and drink, but tomorrow we die. <laughs> Verses 32. Let us turn Epicurus. Thus, this sentence means in the prophet Isaiah 22, 13. Let us even live like beasts if we must die like them. This would be a wiser course if there were no resurrection, nor afterlife or state than to abandon all the pleasures of life and offer and expose ourselves to all the miseries of life and live in continual peril of perishing by savage rage and cruelty. This passage also plainly implies, as I have hinted above, that those who denied the resurrection among the Corinthians were perfect Sadducees, of whose principles we have this uh, this account in the holy writings that they say there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, Acts 23 and 8. That is, such Sadducees were the men against whom the apostle argued. Otherwise, his arguments had no force in them. For though the body should never revive, yet as long as the mind survived it, he might have much advantage from all the hazards he ran for Mashiach's sake. Nay, it is certain that the mind is to be the principal seat and subject of the heavenly glory and happiness. But if there were no hopes after death, would not every wise man prefer an easy and comfortable life before such a wretched one as the apostle led? Nay, and endeavor to enjoy the comforts of life as fast as possible because the continuance of it is short. Note, nothing but the hopes of Better things hereafter can enable a man to forego all the comforts and pleasures here and embrace poverty, contempt, misery, and death. Thus this, or thus did the apostle and primitive Christians, which are the uh, followers of the Messiah, the ones that first first uh, followed uh, Yahweh Shai. Let's read this in Ecclesiastes 6. It says, Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let, the, and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. You must understand this. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee be times unto him and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Let thy mind be, un, be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. Barakat thy Yahweh. Barakat thy Yahweh Shai. Barakat thy Yahweh. Barakat thy Yahweh Shai, man. That's it. The Lord's going to give it to you in your own time. It says, but how wretched was their case 
and how foolish their conduct if they deceive themselves and abuse the world with vain and false hopes. Bullet point five, the apostle closes his argument with a caution, exhortation, and reproof. A caution against the dangerous conversation of bad men, which is the way men live. Conversation is not just what you speak, but your manner of life. It says, men of loose lives and principles, be not deceived, says he. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Verse 33, possibly some of those who said that there was no resurrection of the dead were men of loose lives and endeavored to countenance their vicious practices by so corrupt the principle and had that speech often in their mouths. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Now the apostle grants that their talk was to the purpose if there was no future state. But having confuted their principle, he now warns the Corinthians, which is our people that were in Corinth, how dangerous such men's conversations must prove. He tells them that they would probably be corrupted by them and fall in, and fall in with their course of life. Yeah, that's the danger of it. You don't want to be too close. And this is going into um, the, the beautiful beautiful, powerful man of God, even Enoch, in his uh, time. All right. And it goes to, is it, is it going into Enoch? Yep. But I think it's up, up here. Mm, where is it at? Just talking about Enoch. Well, let me read this here real quick. Ecclesiastes 4 and 11. Wisdom exalteth her children, and layeth hold of them that seek her. He that loveth her loveth life, and they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. He that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory. That she is the spirit of Yahushai, that can only come from the heavens, that power, that that might, wisdom, for Yahushai has become wisdom for us. He's going to be supping with you, talking with you, eating with you, giving you power, giving you great things to behold. All right. It says. He that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory. Wheresoever the uh, and where and who wheresoever she entereth, the Lord will bless, entering into holy uh, souls, making them friends of the Lord and prophets. <clears throat> it says, They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One, and then that love her, the Lord doth love. And what is he going to grant you with, with eternal life? Whoso giveth ear unto her shall judge the nations that power, and he that attendeth unto her shall dwell securely. Ooh. If a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her, and his generation shall hold her in possession. As we're reading in this commentary, like if there's no eternal life and us coming back and a resurrection and a new body and a new world, what is all this for? We're, we're just wasting our time then. All right, catching this hell for the Lord for what? Just to fade into blackness? No, this is all for something. Okay? And we understand that. Now, let's read on. It says, If they gave into their evil principles, note, bad company and conversation are likely to make bad men. Those who would keep their innocence must keep good company. Error and vice are infectious. And if we would avoid the contagion, we must keep clear of those who have taken it. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Proverbs 13 and 20. Woo. Here is an exhortation to break off their sins and rouse themselves and lead a more holy and righteous life. Awake to righteousness or awake righteously. Ek nepsite or dika dika eus or whatever the hell, man. I can't speak Greek. But hey, whatever it means, it, this is what it's going into. And sin not, or sin no more. The disbelief of a future state destroys all virtue and piety. But the best improvement to be made of the truth is to cease from sin and set ourselves to the business of religion, which is worship. And that in good, is, uh, good earnest, if there will be a resurrection and a future life, we should live and act as those who believe it and should not give into such senseless and sottish notions as will debauch our morals 
and render us loose and sensual in our lives. Uh, bullet point three. He here is a reproof and a sharp one to some at least among them. Some of you have not the knowledge of Yahweh. I speak this to your shame. Yeah, many don't know of Yahweh Shai. They don't believe in the resurrection because they love this stupid, whack, punk ass life. And this is nothing. In the life we're living, we're living it for the Lord. So it make it, it makes it more exciting as an adventure, as a journey. But we know that there's greater beyond this. And we're not putting all our eggs in one basket in this world, but we're putting all our eggs in one basket for the world to come. How about that? It says, it says, it is a shame in Christians, which are the believers of the Messiah who are Israelites, not to have the knowledge of Yahweh, the Father, the followers of the Messiah. Religion gives the best information that can be had about Yahweh, his true nature or his nature and grace and government. Those who profess this religion reproach themselves by remaining without knowledge of Yahweh, for it must be owing to their own sloth and slight of Yahweh that, that they are ignorant of him. And it is not a horrid shame for a Christian or a follower of Messiah who is an Israelite to slight the heavenly father and be so wretchedly ignorant in matter in matters that so nearly and highly concern him. Note also, it must be ignorance of Yahweh that leads men into the disbelief of a resurrection and future life. Yeah, as we have it in this time, fallouts and bug outs and demons, other camps that are wicked. All right, it says those who know Yahweh know that he will not abandon his faithful servants nor leave them exposed to such hardships and sufferings without any recompense or reward. They know he is not unfaithful nor unkind to forget their labor and patience, their faithful services and cheerful sufferings or let their labor be in vain. But I am apt to think that the expression has a much stronger meaning that there were uh uh, atheistical people among them who hardly owned a power. All right, it says, or one who had any concern with or took uh, cognizance of human affairs. These were indeed a scandal and shame to any follower of the Messiah who was in an Israelite church. No, real atheism lies at the bottom of men's disbelief of a future state. Those who own uh, idols, he should put idol in there. I know, uh, God, because it's idol, the whatever they held, they believed in ain't power. It says, and a providence, and observe how unequal the distribution of the present life are, and how frequently the best men fare worst. Can hardly doubt an after state where everything will be set to rights. Ooh, man. So, hey, we'll, we'll end it there, you know, just going in. <laughs> I can go on forever. But um, here we go. I'll end it with these scriptures here. This is Ecclesiastes 4 and, uh, and 16. If a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her, and his generation shall hold her in possession. It reads on. It says, for at the first is the spirit. She will walk with him by crooked ways. First, you're learning. You're, you're coming out of the world. You're getting beat up. You're getting tossed. You're getting thrown. You're getting fucked up. All right. But but you're still holding on. You're like Jacob fighting the angel, our forefather. You're not going to give up until you're blessed. It says, for at the first you will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. And that's why we have the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, the power of the resurrection, the truth of it, and the promise and gift of eternal life. And with that, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Kakudash, for whom we do function, Lord, when you have been edified with this lesson, give a dumbbell honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well, once again, as always, our teachers in this ministry, fighting a good fight, fighting for that crown, fighting for a new world. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the whole elect, that house of David, you brothers out there fighting this good fight of faith. Keep it up. You sisters doing that, which is becoming the women. Shalom to those that are addicted unto this ministry. I say, Shalom, Lord's willing, you have been edified until the next time I say, Shalom, on to the next one. Shalom.